Question number eight, Carmel Cepoloni. To the Minister of Social Development, is she concerned that child poverty rates of up to, quote, 20 per cent have been entrenched into New Zealand's economic and social structure, end quote, according to today's Salvation Army report? Oh, point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, standing orders around questions are relatively specific, and there needs to be provided to the clerk's office uh, sufficient evidence for the claims that are being made in a question. To have an allegation like that presented as fact, when in fact all it could ever be presented as was opinion from the Salvation Army, would seem to me to make the question uh, at least questionable, if not in fact out of order. Order. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Speaker. Order. Mr. Speaker, the, from the Right Honourable Winston Mr. Speaker, Peters. That is a, that complaint is easily rebutted by the fact that that is an accurate recitation of what's in the Salvation Army report. That's all that's being uh, asked for as a way of authentication by the questioner, and his complaint is nonsensical. I, th I thank the member for his comment. He is, in fact, on this occasion correct. I had a good look at the report. The question, as it is order, the question as it is worded, says that it's according to the Salvation Army report and I can find exactly the quotes then used within that report. Um, if the member wants further assistance, I suggest he look at Speaker's ruling uh, 1843 by Speaker Jack. It was 1970, so it may just uh, precede the member's involvement with this House. <laughs> but it certainly says that questions can use excerpts and reports and attribute them to that, and it has done so in this case. It has now become a uh, bit disjointed since the asking of the question for the answer. I'm going to invite the Carmel Cepoloni to repeat the question. No, no, I've dealt with the matter. I'll hear from the Honourable Jerry Brown on this occasion. Well, Mr occasion. Speaker, that does beg the question as to whether the question is asking the Minister to have an opinion about the opinion, or whether or not the question is, uh, does she have concerns that the Salvation Army are putting around this sort of tribe? Uh, now the members... Order! The members now on dangerous ground are attempting to argue. What the question is asking is if the minister is concerned with such a suggestion that's been raised in the Salvation Army report. That's a order. That is a perfectly legitimate question. It will now be asked again, and then we'll hear whether the minister is indeed concerned. Chair, 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 chair. To the Minister of Social Development, is she concerned that child poverty rates of up to quote, 20 per cent, have become entrenched into New Zealand's economic and social structure, end quote, according to today's Salvation Army report. The Honourable Speaker. Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, no, and I disagree with their actual conclusion, which is that, and the full quote is, in other words, child poverty rates of between 8 per cent and 20 per cent have become entrenched in New Zealand's economic and social structure. I would also point out that the statistics that the Salvation Army use are not new numbers. In fact, they're taken from MSD's Household Incomes Report, which we released in September last year, and were released again by the Children's Commissioner in his Poverty Monitor Report late last year. But I say to the member, if you read the actual tables that are published in the report, Instead of selectively quoting headlines, in particular, material hardship rates have consistently fallen over the past five years. Furthermore, I would note, as I've noted each time these figures have been released, that this report does not take into account the government's $790 million child hardship package, which provides more childcare assistance for low-income families, increased working for family payments and raised benefit rates for the first time in 40 years. Supplementary question. Order. Supplementary question, Carmel Cepoloni. In light of her answer, is the Salvation Army then wrong when they say that the, quote, culpability of government in this lack of progress should be noted, especially through its welfare reforms, which have yet to identify any positive impacts on the lives of poorer New Zealand children." End quote. 
The order, the Honourable Anne Tolly. Well, Mr. Speaker, if the member had listened to my answer, of course I dispute what the Salvation Army's um, uh, conclusions are taken from the evidence. And in fact, to mention, to, to, to mention, to not even mention that over 50,000 children are no longer living in benefit-dependent homes, when all the evidence tells us, when all the evidence shows that as long as they are living in benefit-dependent homes, they are destined for lives that do include hardship and poverty. This government has done more than any government to lift those children out of poverty. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. When the Prime Minister claimed he was, quote, proud of the steps the government has already taken, end quote, toward child poverty, does that include the fact that child poverty rates have not improved over the last five years? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Well, Mr Speaker, just repeating the same stuff doesn't make it true. If you look at the facts in the report itself, they show considerable progress has been made. Is it enough? No. Is this government content and doing nothing more? No. We all want to make sure that every single New Zealand child in New Zealand has the opportunity to live a great life. And all the long list of things that this government has done that the Prime Minister uh, re uh, uh, spoke about the other day are all destined to help those young New Zealanders live that great life. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. Does she agree with Colonel Hudson when he said that entrenched child and youth poverty has become the new norm and that, quote, politicians must stop just voicing sympathetic rhetoric and actually take real action to reduce child poverty numbers, end quote? If so, will she continue to ignore the Children's Commissioner's call for a cross-party consensus on a target to reduce child poverty? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, no, I don't agree with that gentleman's conclusions, but I do agree with him that it's time that politicians like Labor stop talking about poverty and join this government and back this government with all the measures we have put in place to lift those children out of poverty. Supplementary question. Order. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. Given child poverty rates have remained alarmingly high over the last five years, despite benefit numbers going down, does she accept that her failure to collect and analyse off the benefit outcomes means that, quote, just what has happened to these people and whether they are better or off or worse it remains a mystery? Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Anne well, Mr. Tully. Speaker, I've said several times in this House we have commissioned research uh, post, uh, pre and post welfare reforms to see exactly what happens to people uh, who go off benefit. But the evidence is very clear, and, and the Labor Party really have to get to grips with it that a life dependent on taxpayers' um, benefits is a life leads to a life of hardship and poverty, not only for the people who are dependent on that support, but for their children. So the best way out of poverty is to, in a, is to, to get people into work, and that's what this government has focused on. We are being successful with it. We know that for some people uh, it is difficult. We're providing training. We're providing um, money for, for things like um, driver's licences. We are doing everything we can to support people into employment because that is the best way to lift them out of poverty. 